Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be discussing Borderlands. This is Andrew and Jenna. We both went to see Borderlands when it came out, and funny enough, this movie went to digital right away. It was a box office bomb. It made 32 million on a production budget of 110 million. And again, that's just an estimate, but this was a blockbuster, a really cheap, ugly blockbuster. We can get down to it. This is a movie that was doomed. We kind of all knew this, like going into it. I remember when this movie was announced and I just immediately was thinking, why aren't they revealing any images? Why is there, there was just a silhouette kind of of all the main characters of Kevin Hart, Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis, Ariana Greenblatt, whoever's in this movie. And it was just a vague silhouette, so I was like, they are not really seeing any images, so they're not proud of it. And then when we actually got the trailer, we immediately were like, oh yeah, this, this is terrible. I was so not excited for this movie. I was mostly annoyed because this was gonna take Deadpool and Wolverine out of premium format, uh, because this was like the first technically big movie coming out since then. But honestly, no one played this movie in IMAX. I went to go see this movie in the, just a regular theater. I wish I did get to see it in IMAX, but I didn't. And it kind of just well, it wasn't that big a deal. I saw The Crow in IMAX and it did nothing. Uh, but this was just overall a really terrible movie. And it was directed by Eli Roth. I really don't think this is his type of movie. I really love Eli Roth as a director when he makes these, you know, horror movies like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, I thought was very silly, but very like up his alley when he made The Green Inferno. I like his horror films. This is not an Eli Roth film. This feels like a movie he was just handed the reins to when he took control of it, but really it just is such a bad movie. And when you compare it to Guardians of the Galaxy, which is clearly what they were trying to go for with this film, you kind of see the similar vibes. You see that this movie was trying to be Guardians of the Galaxy, but it just isn't. And it really does all go down a story and we can break that down and talk about that. Really, there's just no characters to this film. There's no heart, no arc. And honestly, I was eight minutes late to go see this film. Uh, do you remember that? We kind of like came like- Oh yeah. Right? Like we kind of came like a little bit late into it, but like still we got the gist. She was like on a bus. Ariana Greenblatt wasn't in it. I feel like I would have been like, oh my God, yeah, let's see it. I know. I know. I feel like with Ariana Greenblatt, she really had like a lot of charisma. She was great. She definitely looked younger than she was in Barbie, which is crazy because they filmed this movie before they filmed Barbie, didn't they? Yeah, this movie was been has been delayed for some time for a lot of different reasons. Like because of the strike? For that, just for the fact that I assume the movie is just awful and they didn't yeah. know when to release it. And just visual effects, because the visual effects, like what was your take on the visual effects? If you even remember, this was a movie. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. I remember <laughs> after we left the movie, you were saying how even like fans of the, the video game we're like, this is such a bad representation of the video game as a whole. Oh yeah, we gotta get into spoiler territory here because honestly, is this, this is not a plot. This is not a movie that I really care to remember. I honestly stopped caring about the plot about like with an hour to go in the movie. I really stopped caring. The beginning, I was honestly kind of interested because it was a very simple journey just following Kate Blanchett's Lilith. Um, and I kind of thought, okay, we're, we're gonna get some like really ugly looking, but you know, could be campy Guardians of the Galaxy-esque film. But then it didn't become that like corny, so bad it's good film. It just became a bad, boring, they have to like find some map type of film. And once it gets into all those like things where they have to do this boilerplate plot, we have to find this and this, it just loses its charisma. And that's like the biggest comparison to Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy always has this kind of like consistent comedy, this consistent sense of buddy and like great pairings. And you, you just feel like they all have a great relationship from Gamora to Star-Lord to Drax, Rocket, Groot, just like Drax kind of, you know, always saying comedic things here. This is so awkward. None of the people here have any chemistry together at all. Kevin Hart, he feels completely miscast. I, I, I would, I was thinking if you're gonna use Kevin Hart, make him be Kevin Hart, have some comedy, something like that. But really he's just not utilized well at all here. Jamie Lee Curtis also kind of just fades into the background. I feel like it's because Eli Roth has worked with a lot of these actors before he's comfortable bringing them on. And honestly, who wouldn't want to bring on Kate Blanchett or, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis if you've worked with them before. And great actors like Ariana Greenblatt. And, you know, Kevin Hart is great at doing what he does, but it just, nothing feels like it's like matching here. It feels like a bunch of people just like awkwardly kind of met and we're like, let's make this thing. But really no one had like the same vision. I mean, that's kind of what I thought. Well, what was your take on it? I think I agree with you when you say I, that Kevin Hart, they didn't use him to his ability of what he could have been, like his comedic timing and stuff like that. 
And who was the other one you said? Jamie Lee Curtis, Kate Blanchett. Jamie Lee Curtis definitely faded into the background too. She was such a minimalistic character, but like she. She's an iconic actress. Exactly. Like, why did she agree to do this? I think she, she knows Eli Roth, and he brought her on. He loves horror. And to be honest, when you talk about like how the games, like people were mad about the games, I never played Borderlands. I like video games. I don't game a lot, but I never really played Borderlands. And I did see people who were complaining about how this this end reveal um, involving Lilith and her transformation was just something that this is something I really can't comment on actually because I didn't really play the games. But just, like, I feel like they went with a very simple story route. And, and like, see, this is something that even if you, you've you seen the movie and you've seen the, the games, you could just, when you've played the games, you could agree that this movie just is a horrible movie just in terms of its uh, visuals. It's The score, honestly, was okay at some parts. But just as a film, it doesn't work because there's no character dynamics. There's no sense of you know, visuals that, like, bring you in. Guardians of the Galaxy is based on a comic book. And what James Gunn did was he took these characters that were completely different in the comics, they looked different, they had somewhat different stories, and he changed them, he made his own story with that. I do think Eli Roth, and I think Craig Mazin wrote this, who is a pretty talented screenwriter, but I think he did this um, underneath a pen name, yeah, Joe Crombie. Yeah, I mean, this guy's worked on the scary movie films, he did superhero movie, which was also kind of like a parody film. Um, he works on Chernobyl, Last of Us. It's funny that he wanted to take his name off of Borderlands. He was so embarrassed by this. But it's interesting to me that this movie, you know, didn't use these characters in a way to like remix it, to shake it up and make this original kind of story. The plot is so boring. I mean, the logline is Lilith, an outlaw, forms an alliance with a team of misfits to find the missing daughter of the most powerful man in the universe. And also then there's like this villain reveal with uh, Edgar Ramirez as the villain. Terrible villain. What was your, your take? on the villain. Do you remember Ariana Greenblatt's dad? Oh, or yeah. was it that her, was the so key? Stupid. She's like, I'm the key. That was so stupid. Uh, like he comes in at the end. Like, he wasn't even scary wasn't though, was my it, thing. Like, it felt like Spy Kids. Scene where it was kind of like the guards were all like covering him at first or something? Yeah, or it like, felt like I a direct, that was stupid. it felt like a direct to DVD movie. Just like the visual presentation of this guy like as the villain, I'm like, that's it. He's just some regular guy with like some bodyguards who was like, come to me to uh, Tiny Tina, Ariana Greenblatt's character. Yeah, I, I just thought it felt like a parody almost, but, but a bad parody. Didn't you say a also bad in the video game Not they knew parody. from the beginning who the... Yeah, yeah, Lilith. There's just a lot of, of stuff done here that I, I feel like could have been done better. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, even Jack Black voicing Claptrap, what a, a poor choice. Like, I don't know, just because Jack Black is like such a, a visual presence as well. Right? Like, it worked for, I feel like, Bowser. I don't I don't know, you know, like, he was Bowser. He definitely has such an iconic voice. It's he does. I just feel like it, it just kind of, like, fades into everything here. It's like white noise. Especially there's, like, a scene where he's, like, oh. pooping out bullets, the robot, and it was just so awkward. It was, oh, yeah. It was, there's a lot of comedic things that just don't work here, because nothing really is yeah, funny. Yeah, I think, actually, Jack Black's voicing fades to the back, too. Yeah, I mean, into the black. Into the black. Jack Black into the back. <laughs> but true that it, he he's... All the people in here I do like. I just feel like they're all utilized. Like, it, it's just all wrong. It's like when you realize casting can just be done pretty poorly. It's funny. Amber Heard actually has better chemistry with Aquaman, which is funny because there were all these rumors going around when the trial came out that, like, she was just kind of, like, given the role, like, because nepo nepotism. She has connections. Wait, or, with Johnny Depp. Baby? No, this is when she was dating Johnny Depp. Oh, she's but he wife. he has a character. He has a relationship with Warner Brothers, or did. So he was like, "Oh, you could be in this film." But the then head of DC Films was like, "Oh, there's no chemistry with Aquaman and her. She's just like she's attractive. She's she's not like the print." Was there the, any like? I thought it was fine, like on a, a campy level. Aquaman. What'd you say, Aquaman? Aquaman? Yeah, well, like those movies they were very silly. But that's why I feel like it worked. But they weren't, like, great movies. They were just really silly, really... They knew they were dumb spectacles. And James Wan's a great director. But even for him, that was, like... He was just so doing do a dumb think, comic book movie. What about this movie? Do you think it was just... He went into it knowing it wasn't going to be anything, quote-unquote, Yeah. Great. It was just going to be some, like, quote-unquote, as you said, like, dumb spectacle. Like, it's just to watch it. 
Yeah, and the crazy thing is he wrote the screenplay. So to me, it's not like he was just handed a script. What other films does he... Done? Eli Roth has done a lot of great, like, independent horror oh, films. Said horror, Ho right? Hostel, Thanksgiving, what, like Knock Knock. Horror, right? Yeah, so this fits, like, kind of the tone you would think, but it's very yes, different. Yes, but it's different. You can't be, I feel like, campy with a type of movie like this. Yeah, and he gets it away with... Off just floppy. Yeah, he gets away with a lot more of his movies because his movies have violence in them. They have, like... Cor corny puns but like you with lots of violence you can't be in corny in horror because that's a genre i feel like and they can do it in they can do it purposely in this genre as other movies prove you know like guardians of the galaxy has that kind of that's true, but that's but more do serious it in a sloppy way true it has a they emotional it, heart it has this arc of they these do it yeah correct. i feel like there's only a certain way you can do like comedy when it comes to action that's true. It just wasn't, yeah, a movie that I feel like was meant for him to write because he probably just cobbled a bunch of plots together from the script along with that other guy who did The Last of Us, which is, like, pretty big. It and sucks it, because something like another video game, like you just said, The Last of Us, could like, that's something that's, like, really awesome now. It's an awesome creation. It yeah. just sucks because this is also a video game that, given a different person making it, could have been better in something, like, actually worth watching that's so true i i know what what just came out isn't there another like video game adaptation that just came out it was so i don't bad. know but i know the last of us what season two is coming out yeah that's coming out but that actually does a very good job just and, and same with the sonic movie for kids and and uh, i just think the sonic movie does a good job at like bringing you can point is you can make a good story you just need a heart to your story the heart of borderlands just there is no heart i was gonna say there is no heart. There, there's the girl like, uh, like Ariana Greenblatt, I guess, realizing she's not, like, the key. Yeah, but, but that, everyone that... knows who is going into it, wanting to see it, knows that already. Exactly. That's what people are saying, too. But it's also, and I guess just for me, not even knowing that, it just, as a movie reveal itself, is, is so empty. Because the character of Lilith, Kate Blanchett's character, it's not like she has this, like really deep backstory she's just kind of there and she's like yeah, yeah i'm here like there's oh, no her mom or something but they didn't even really I know. dive into that that's true see that's what i mean like yeah you, you just reminded me of that they, they never give you this like that that feeling like in guardians of uh, peter quill's mom there's this whole emotional thing like at the beginning where he watches her die and then he's kidnapped and then like his exactly. whole his whole story is like he carries her music with him exactly. so there's this like consistent emotion they but like in this they didn't break the nothing. ice fully they made a small crack when they went back to where she like grew up and she found out what her mom did you just reminded That's me of like, that whole scene a yeah a crack in the ice like a small crack you're not breaking through to like the deep water though you know what I mean yeah no there's where, like the Guardians of the Galaxy does that I feel like we can look at the Guardians of the Galaxy and be like that's everything right that should be in a comedic action movie. Exactly. And that's just... And it's it's successful, too. Those movies are actually entertaining oh, yeah. to watch and make money. Oh, I love watching those movies. And now they're done. They actually probably will make a fourth one, honestly. Really? Well, without the director, without James Gunn. Yeah, because James Gunn is leaving to uh, go... Well, he already left, actually. He's working on Superman at DC. But they're probably going to replace... No, he went to DC. Yeah, this is big news. This has wow. been news, but yeah, he's currently, I think they're almost wrapped at Superman, that's coming out next year, but he's no longer going to be working with Guardians of the Galaxy, so they're going to find another director. Gonna, do you think the DC is kind of, like, do you think he will be able to bring more of a DC, like, the oomph back that he's yeah, able definitely. to bring to Marvel? Because one of the big things he's talking about is he wants to have a different style for each movie, which is really important because Marvel's kind of now known for, they were good and they did actually have different styles, but now all their movies are the same. That's what I'm saying. Because they're do so Disneyified now. They're the same do you movie. you think going forward that Marvel is already Even taking Deadpool a over. Yeah. kind of going down? Do you think DC is going to start coming up and rising? Yeah, that's pretty much what's happening right now. And we're going to see next year with the Thunderbolts, which the trailer just came out, and with the Captain America Brave New World, which was... What were you going to say? I was going to say that movie was reshot a lot of times. So Did you yes. see also that Tom Holland signed up for like a... Yeah, Avengers. For He's like, going to be in the no, next like one. three more uh, Spider-Men. They hang on to the actors who they know are going to bring people in. Do you think the Spider... Like, They're going to bring back Tobey Maguire too. How do you and feel Garfield. about Spider-Man given that Marvel is kind of going downhill though? Well, I think that they better... They better go in a good direction with that because the director, actually, Destin Daniel Cretton of Shang-Chi is going to be directing the new Spider-Man movie. I feel like you can't flop Spider-Man. You can't. It's a movie that you can't flop. 
And interestingly enough, and we can save this for another time because, I mean, I I've talked about this a lot, my dislike for No Way Home. They've been very successful, but I still feel like those movies are very empty. The new Spider-Man films. like, the Captain Marvel, like, all the they movies? They're just soulless. What about them? Like, do you think those were just fillers in a way? To be like, Marvel's coming out with stuff. People will see because it it's Marvel. Yeah, because the Marvels absolutely does nothing to the main storyline. And honestly, Spider-Man really doesn't either. The newest Spider-Man, I mean, it does introduce it actually does introduce the two Spider-Men into the main timeline, and it does give Peter this, like, kind of reason to become his own Spider-Man. I mean, everyone's seen that, like, he loses his identity. Only, like, Marvel character, I think. It's a great character. From Avengers Endgame, really, kind of. Right? Yes, but they do have to go back to his roots of making him just, like, a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I, I feel like, like that's what they've lost from it, just recently. Yeah, Spider-Man and Avengers, I think, is where they fully hone in go fully like into it immersing and making like what marvel has been known for and why they're popular yes i think captain marvel and all of that stuff are just fillers yes marvel needs to take a step back they need to bring things to a grounded level because everyone kind of there's there's too much at stake that was my issue with deadpool and wolverine like the whole issue is oh the universe could collapse like just have it be something more simple you know like and i think that's a, a really boat good way to could hope, like sink coming back to borderlands early Marvel is a good way to look at how like comedic action can be done well and I think more newer Marvel can be looked at to see well they can also flop in ways that that how action like Borderlands action can be floppy Borderlands is like the Marvels yeah it's just like a filler movie like nothing happens there's exactly. a couple it's the Marvels was more entertaining because honestly I liked the dynamic between the, the three women Marvel more. movies are more entertaining and better than this filler Borderlands movie for sure because yeah it's doing nothing for an actual like no one's going to end up seeing a sequel because no one saw this one and because there's no characters to care what's about their, what's what's there to it though like, there's exactly nothing, like, it's ending and it's like okay it's ending like, and it's not like you care about any of the that's that's what I mean like you could cut Kevin Hart from the movie and nothing would change like it's not like they're needed. Go back and see a second one. The only reason I would, which is the reason I saw the first one, was for Ariana Greenblatt. Yeah, and the only reason I saw it was really just to see how bad it was, and because it had a zero. I don't think Ariana Greenblatt would go back and do it. She definitely Seeing wouldn't. She has other options. Is, She'll move to DC. DC is on the rise. She's gonna move there, and they're definitely oh, gonna she be could do Marvel. doing grounded stuff. She already has but she, she oh yeah she but she she can actually do both because if you if you think about it, she i don't think she's going to dc who knows Pro possibly i mean they have a lot of projects she could but also she could do another marvel project because she was only in avengers in a flashback as young gamora well, I, I so she could easily do another. i don't see her doing same with action. jenna ortega i don't see her doing more action maybe who knows i think she will for the paycheck. But also because, hey, they might be cool movies to be a part of. So, I think who Ariana wouldn't Green be in a movie like that? From, is an actress from this Borderland movie that will be on the upcoming rise even more that will just keep getting bigger and bigger. Oh, yeah. Because it has a lot of famous people in it. Like, I mean, you have Jamie Lee Curtis, who's an, a legend. You have Kate, literally two legendary actresses. It's like, just why did they do this though, movie? Because Eli she Ron. was in. Like, she was very, she got very good recognition for her role in Barbie. She's okay, though. She's she's fine. Like, she's gonna keep appearing and stuff. No one's gonna blame Ariana Gleanbat or however no, it's for Borderlands. way before she And did exactly. Barbie. It might be embarrassing, she yes. Way, you can tell. Like, even watching it, I was like, damn, she looks way younger. Yes, and Jack Black has the Minecraft movie still coming out, which will, people hate him for that. Don't but start, no but one cares. That, i Did I'm you see very... the clip where the actress in it you literally see the fading of the green screen no but uh, so i good. want them to just recreate it with the blocky like actual minecraft texture it would be so funny i just i hate when make it look just like create fake. movies to be fillers just to get it out there knowing they're gonna make money because of the title or because of oh. the person and then when you could yeah have had it's minecraft really that's the one i was thinking movie. of it's fucking minecraft you could have done like something really awesome with it but you kind of just it's gonna be a flop but something tells gonna me we're gonna be having the same conversation but they're about gonna this. get money for it because it's minecraft again it's the same shit but will they the same shit it's a this video movie didn't game, get money though and the people the video game people who play the game are gonna go into this hoping for something and it's gonna be shitty just like borderlands was and it's gonna be a letdown when it could have been something great and we see that in the last of us that should be taken as an example going forward for video games turning into a movie simple that 
Thank you very much. Do you actually think Minecraft could be a financial success? Anything can be a financial success in a good movie if they do it correctly. And honestly... People just don't like to do things... Like, they like to rush things knowing that, oh, it's Minecraft, so everyone's going to see it. It doesn't matter if it's actually good or not. You know what I mean? They rushed it. I mean, they had so much time to make that movie, but they really, like, just made it... It looks like they just had a really awful story. Also, the guy, John Spates, who worked on Dune worked on a lot of other like big movies he wrote apparently the original draft for minecraft i don't know if this is his draft but it's just funny to think about it. i think that was a while ago but the point is minecraft like that movie if it makes money i, I assume it has a wider audience than borderlands minecraft seems minecraft, somewhat minecraft, minecraft, it has kids about it, adults the minecraft world is so interesting if i was if say if i was writing something for the minecraft movie i think i would go in a weird way like i would want to make it feel like like not like i wouldn't want so much like comedic action per se i think i'd want more like like weirdness go about like because it's a weird world and then you're having actual people in it because it's not an animated film it it's literally an animated world with real people. The best way to sum up that trailer, which honestly makes sense that it's so divisive, is it feels like it's a parody trailer. And everyone's saying it's like one of those Saturday Night Live parody trailers. It feels like that. Yeah. Like everything down to the lines, like where the girl's saying, he's such a tool bag. And then Jason Moe goes, all right. Like with the sarcastic eye roll. Like, it's just like, what? Who? It just feels not real. It feels like, they is this- could have done something good with it. I, I know, it would have been cool to see an epic, actually animated movie like the Lego movie. Exactly. Where that takes place. I don't think they should have done. It could be self aware and fun, but also involve the whole lore. I feel How like this can is going to be. a serious movie that's yeah. not a flop in an animated world with real people. We're going to have to break this down in a separate video because I actually do want to talk about the Minecraft trailer. But yeah, I, I feel that this. We're going to have the same discussion when that movie comes out because Borderlands feels like Minecraft's going to be Borderlands 2.0. Yeah, moral of the story. Don't make your movie horrible. Just just write a good story. Do when you're doing action comedy, there's only one way to do it right. And if you don't do it right, it's gonna be a flop. And it's gonna be obvious that it's a flop. Exactly. And Borderlands was a great example of taking a video game into a movie and being a flop. Yeah. Well, yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And let me know what you guys think of Borderlands. If you even saw it, I doubt people did. It's streaming, it's on digital. I am glad I got to see it in the theater, got the, the trash experience. This is not a movie that's coming back for those midnight movies like Rocky Horror, because that's actually a movie worth watching. So guys, thank you so much again, and see you again soon.